Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Las Vegas. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Going bell to bell with the best in professional wrestling news, entertainment, and lots of Sin City surprises from inside the squared circle. Now, let's get to all the exciting pro wrestling action and bring on the host. Here is Mark Hoke. All right, everybody. Welcome back for hour number two of the Mark Hoke Show here on KDON 101.5 FM, the talk of Las Vegas. And, of course, we're also on the Odyssey app worldwide, downloaded now or Hobgoblins will come to your house and do bad things to your candy dishes. I don't know why I just picked that, but, you know, why not? Just trying to scare everybody, Jason Alpert. Yeah, I don't know if that really worked, though, you know. It's okay. about Halloween time, so yeah. it might not have worked. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe a firework will, you know, now if you would have had chase like, your dog. If you would have had Jacob standing behind you, Jacob Fatu standing behind you, it may have been a little scarier. Okay, so Jacob Fatu is going to come to your house and take there your you phone. Go. All right, that's, that, that'll work. And, of course, uh, we're also streaming live on YouTube, Facebook, and X. So hop on that YouTube and you know subscribe to our channel right now. We would certainly appreciate it. Bring you the best in pro wrestling news and entertainment. Having a blast here. Of course, had uh, Coach Rosie on in the first hour. And I wanted to take the time to introduce to you our very special guest for hour number two. And really, this guy one of the legends of professional wrestling and really has been there for so many of the integral moments and things that have happened behind the scenes as well in the history of this industry. But of course, you know, he's the head of the board for the uh, George Tregos Luthez professional wrestling hall of fame. And they have their 25th anniversary hall of fame induction weekend coming up July 18th through the 20th in Waterloo, Iowa. And if you haven't gotten a ticket yet, and I need to get mine, I really should got to get out there and figure out a way to do it. You should too. Shame on you if you haven't, because it is going to be an incredible weekend. I am honored to welcome to the Mark Hoke Show, Gerald Briscoe. Gerald, thank you for coming on the Mark Hoke Show. We are thrilled to have you with us, sir. Well, thank you so much, Mark. We had a couple of false finishes coming on here. All right, my. My lake out here. You're talking about that hurricane barrel down in that down in the Caribbean down there. Hopefully, it stays down that direction and bless those people that it's headed for down there. Because I know how it is living here on the coast of Florida. But hearing that report come out of Las Vegas, I got kind of chuckled. Man, but when's the last time you guys get hit by a hurricane? <laughs> you know, we actually came close. Last hurricane year. Helms probably was the last yeah. hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when he comes to Vegas, it is quality entertainment. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, but yeah, we're just we're just getting a lot of heat. That's all. So yeah, yeah let, let, well, that one ten yesterday wasn't a lot of fun. Ooh. Well, that is dry heat. <laughs> yeah, it is dry. Thank God. Thank God. Because dry I, heat. I stick her head in the oven. See how hot that is. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we we've, we've got. I'm our, a Florida guy, so I can laugh about that. You know. So, well, you guys got humidity, yeah, but you guys are hot. <laughs> yes, it is. It is a little toasty, sir. But yeah, I'll t- I'll take that over that Florida humidity anytime. I did a lot of traveling down Florida, and yeah, that the stepping well, out just, the door. I'm and, just the opposite. I'll take the Florida humidity over that 110, 112 degrees. That's go fair. Out, go out and step on that asphalt, or try to open up a car door in that heat compared to this heat here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we all have our issues, right? I mean, if that's the worst thing that's happened to us, is heat during the summertime. Get off! Come on. Yep, I hear you. I hear you. Well, Gerald, uh, I you know first uh, before we get uh, rolling into everything with you, I, I did want to ask you a uh, real quick. Of course, uh, Sika passed away, and I wanted to give you a chance to to talk about him real quick and your memories of of Sika. Well, Sika, Sika, and I'm and 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 his brother, my brother, go way way back. Uh, matter of fact, in, in the early seventies, when I first got into the wrestling business, I made a trip to. Uh, Australia, and as part of the deal, Jim Barnett always traded talent with New Zealand. So I got to go over to New Zealand on a couple of shows over there, and and that's when I first met. I was still a rookie, and you know he was he didn't have that big old head of hair that he had back then. I it quite the size, and 
Then the next time I run into him, Jack and I are wrestling in Puerto Rico. Jack, my brother and I are wrestling in Puerto Rico. And all of a sudden, we're in the ring. I posted it the other night on, on Twitter or X, whatever the hell it is now. And so happened to hear this commotion, see all these people scattered and running for their lives. And I look out there and I cross where the hills come in. And I see these two huge monsters with hair out there here, those big old froze, and they look like 400 pounders from where I was standing. As those, as those cold chills were running down the back of my spine, I'm wondering my question of why I got into professional wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> I looked over at Brother Jack, and he kind of had that same puzzled look on his face, and Jack could go, I said, Jack, what are we going to do? And he looked at me and said, Brother, anything they want to do. <laughs> <laughs> So we quickly adapted our game plan, and that, that's the mark of a true professional one. You could look at your opponent and quickly uh, adapt to your game plan about just whatever you guys want to do. We're here for you. <laughs> but it turned out we had one heck of a match, uh, you know, fighting all over places. They scared the heck out of those Puerto Rican fans, and they scared the heck out of us two Okie boys, too. But we went on and became close, close friends with them. We had them in Florida, Georgia. Worked with them all over the country, all Mexico, all, all over the world. So I was really proud to, to be their friend. And Sika uh, is such a wonderful guy. I mean, no matter where I'd run into him, it was always a brother, brother, how you doing, brother? And give you a big hug. And then Wes, my son, he developed a close relationship with him. And that's all Sika, every time he'd say, hey, your brother, he looked great, man, you know. So he he became family. That's how that's how it is in our business. There, you 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 compete against these guys worldwide. You gain respect for them, and then then the next thing you know, you're family with them. And I I, I had no no qualms about God saying I was a proud brother of Zika and Alpha. Well, that's great to hear. And you know, it, I've always found it interesting. You know, we, with the bloodline situation going on in WWE, we're we're seeing so much about family in pro wrestling and of course you and your brother jack uh complete legends and travel the world together and did so much what is the mystique about being able to work with family now in obviously out in front of people but also behind the scenes how great is that to be able to have that time to be able to spend it with family as opposed to just being on your own well, it's the best thing in the world. You know, I, I, I can't imagine me going through my uh, the business all those years without Jack at by my side, and as, as not only as a, as a brother, but as as a uh, fellow competitor, somebody that that's been in those situations that that I was trying to get into. Jack, you know, been five years older than me. He had a little bit more experience than I did. So when I would run into issues, run into problems, and especially the backstage politics as a young man trying to navigate them and having somebody who was, when, when I was breaking in, Jack was really on that rocket ship to, to start him. You know, he was, he, he was catching on. He went down to Dallas and uh, a couple of guys saw him down there, referred him to Eddie Graham. Eddie Graham flew him out to Florida, tried him out, took a look at him, signed him immediately. And, and strap that rocket ship on him. But Jack had already gone through those political things. And you gotta you gotta consider the sixties, late sixties, coming out of college into the end of the world of professional wrestling. There wasn't a lot of college wrestlers out at that time. Not like there is now, not not you know, and I, uh, because of Jim Ross and I uh, made it a made it a, 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 a just a quest for us to go out and recruit these college kids. But there it wasn't like that when we were starting so you know, there's always that animosity, a college kid, shooter boy, raster, all that stuff. And, you know, you get upset, you get your little, you know, concerned. Hey, well, I'm going to have to do something. So a quick phone call to my brother would, would help me solve those problems right away. So it was invaluable having family, you know, not only in the corner, but on that telephone when, when, when I needed to call to navigate some political situation that, that developed that territory or something. That's amazing. And, you know, and it was funny that when I was getting ready for this interview, I, when I started looking back over your career, I had almost forgotten just how intertwined you have been from back when you started wrestling, you know, until you had completely stepped away 
how intertwined you are with so many incredible moments and things that have happened over the years in pro wrestling. I mean, from out in front of the camera to everything that happened in Georgia and behind the scenes at WWE and even you know the, when you won the hardcore championship and everything else, just all those all that stuff that you were you were in the middle of all this. Did you ever imagine when you got started that all these crazy things were going to happen to you and just how much in the middle you were going to be of this? It's it's a, it's absolutely phenomenal. You know, thank you for that. But you know, I, you know, hearing some of these guys on a podcast. Sometimes, you know, the how history changes. You know, I was there. I know I was there. But sometimes I start questioning myself if I was legitimately even there in these situations that I'm supposed to be taking care of, credit for because it seems like everybody else did what I was uh, have supposed to have done. You know, so uh, I, I, I quit taking credit for anything <laughs> anymore. Because I don't, I don't want to lie and say, well, maybe I was just a figment of my imagination. Maybe I didn't see Hulk Hogan when he was starting out in his business. Maybe I wasn't in Montreal when all that stuff happened. Maybe I wasn't backstage when he fights. But I don't know. I, I, I Sometimes I doubt myself. But you know what? To uh, answer your question, I'm a, I'm a small-town boy, Bow Legs, Oklahoma, Blackwell, Oklahoma. You know, population so small that don't even register now. Now they're on the map at least, but back in my day, they weren't even on the map. But uh, uh, to to go where I've gone to be involved in the situation that I've been involved in, sometimes I gotta slap myself up the side of the head and say, "Yeah, you really were there." And and I'm amazed. I, I'm, I'm blessed to have been able to get in that position. And why, you know, sometimes just to just the stroke of the of the pen uh, kind of put me in that position and gaining the confidence of promoters. And, you know, that that's, that's where this business is really, really evolved from. You know, it is it, it, when we were starting out, you know, you had to get that confidence. You, you know, you don't win anything. But what you win when you get a belt, you that proves that you won the confidence of the promoter mm-hmm. and of the fans. And once you win that confidence of the promoter, Word, word starts to spread around to other promoters. Hey, this guy's a business guy. You know, you, you can, you can draw, you can draw money with him and you do business with it. So, you know, and having that, I think that gets boiled down to my mom and my upbringing. My mom was a single mom, raised six of us and, uh, you know, told us, uh, taught us at an early age what was right and what was wrong. And most of all, always speak up if you think you're right. And that's a, that's something I never had an issue with, with, with speaking up. <laughs> Jason, do you have a question for uh, for Gerald Briscoe? You know, Gerald, uh, the one thing I, I just really want to know, what was it like, uh, you know, traveling and, and having to, to be on the road so much? Uh, you know, how did that affect your, your personal life? I know you were out there, you know, a lot of times with your brother and stuff, but but how did you handle that? Uh, you know, it, it, you know, uh, you know, Jack wasn't, you know, like I said, when we grew up, uh, my mom, uh, a single parent with my mom. So Jack was always that, that, that authority figure. I mean, even when I was a kid in elementary school, you know, Jack was the one that kicked my butt if I didn't do my homework. Jack was the one that, yeah, you know, funny stories. It's in Jack's book, you know, I, I, hey, people know me, know I'm not a very good speller and that's just, that's being kind when I say not very good. I'm a horrible speller, but Jack would, my mom wouldn't let me go to bed until I learned all my spelling words. So Jack would get frustrated with me. We had to share a bedroom because we had a small house. So Jack would hide outside the, the living room window. And my mom asked me how to spell a word and I backed my big butt up the deck to that window and Jack would be whispering the words to me how to spell a word. <laughs> so, so I, we could both go to bed. So, <laughs> yeah. So it was kind of like that all through my career. I kind of relied on him to help me spell spell my way through the business there. But, uh, you know, being on the road, uh, as much as we were on the road back in those days, I waited and waited and waited. My wife had patience with me and my girlfriend at the time who ended up my wife, you know, because we knew it would be hard to raise a family out on the road. So we kind of waited to, uh, late to have our kids and, and to get married and all that stuff. And it worked out. I'm still married to the same wonderful lady, Barbara, for the last 44 years. So wow. I'm thrilled about that. That's great. That is incredible. Well, of course, one of the main reasons we wanted to make sure we got you on the show today is because of the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. 
And, you know, of course, a lot of people talk about the WWE Hall of Fame, but the the George Trejo Sleuthes Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame in Waterloo, Iowa, is one that I think people sometimes overlook a little bit, but they shouldn't because, you know, this is, you've got the 25th anniversary induction ceremonies coming up. And, you know, this was at the start was designed to recognize a lot of the guys that had done stuff on the amateur side of things and, you know, has evolved over time and you have different uh, awards uh, for different categories. But tell everybody a little bit about the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame in Waterloo, Iowa, how that started and, uh, you know, how it's evolved over the years. Well, a good friend of mine, Mike Chapman, one of the great wrestling historians, uh, he, he wrote uh, uh, the Dan Gable's book, the, the, the Two Dads, about Danny Hodge and Danny Gable. And originally it was supposed to be about the three dads, and the third dad was going to be who? Dan Severn, because Dan was such a hot shot in college wrestling. They ended up getting beat as, as the last, last city of the year. So Mike changed it to uh, to uh, to the t- uh, two dads, Danny Hodge and, and Dan, Dan Gable, of course. So uh, Mike was a really close friend. Uh, uh, Mike, Ben, and I were really close friends with Coach Gable. And uh, the only uh, amateur wrestling museum in the entire United States was located in Stillwater, Oklahoma, where, I, where Jack and I went to school at Oklahoma State University. So Mike wanted Iowa to have something equal. So he, he, he uh, was a huge uh, pro wrestling fan. He was instrumental in getting uh, in Humboldt, uh, Iowa, getting that statue of Frank Gotch uh, erected there. Did the fundraisers and and he did so much for for. So when he opened the museum, he opened it. Okay, it's going to be a true muse- museum honoring wrestling. And so he, of course, uh, the main focus with Dan Gable was the Dan Gable Museum, Dan Gable International Museum. But he also put put a pro wing in there. And who better at the time? We're talking 25 years ago. The great, 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 incomparable Lou Thez mm-hmm. and George George Tregas, who was Lou's trainer. You know that's how Tregas got involved. And uh, Tregas, the son, now is an international uh, trader, uh, uh, importer, exporter out out in the LA area, and uh, still still lends his support both financially and and uh, verbally and uh, mentally to to the museum there. So Mike had the museum and. As things go, you know, through the years, there became some political issues sprout up. So Mike, Mike resigned his post. So the pro wrestling museum, after Mike uh, resigned, wow, I mean, the pro wrestling part of it started sliding, sliding. We went from being the biggest event, and uh, it was in Newton, Iowa, uh, biggest event of the year for the museum, down to just a three-day day, down to just one day where the guys basically came in and got their award. So. It was dying from both financially and and uh, and uh, and uh, however, uh, and uh, and morally, it, it was dying because there was there was nothing there to do. So the the uh, uh, Mike was asked to resign because the museum was going downhill. So when they, when he resigned, the, the Stillwater chapter of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame, which is strictly amateur wrestling, if there was Stillwater there. The director is an Oklahoma State guy, like I am, and Jack is, and he called me and he said, "Hey, Briscoe, we need your help. We need your help to, at the Waterloo Hour Museum." And I said, "Well, the word's on the street that you're going to kill the thing in a couple of years. I don't want to go out there and then be the one that you know that it dies, the leadership that, that it dies underneath. And so, unless I get your word that uh, you're, we're going to be there as long as that museum's in existence, and." I don't want any part of it. I don't want to be the one that killed the Dan Gable Museum. Had Dan mm. Gable come and look at me. <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> yeah, it'd be bad for all. Of us. <laughs> and so he said, Briscoe, I give you my word as a cowboy. As long as I'm in charge of this museum, which I'm going to be here as long as I live, then then you're 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 going to be in charge of that museum up there, the wing of the Dan G- uh, the the George Trigus Luthez wing. And there's, there's several, there's a Greco wing, there's freestyle wing, a folk uh, a wing. And of course, a professional. Rep. He said, I, I said, well, I want to take, I want to take it back where it's a three day event. I'm, I'm not going to do a one day event. He said, it's yours. You do what you want to do with it. Just keep it under budget. <laughs> <laughs> Key word, right? Keep it under budget. Right. Well, we, had, we had no budget. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> All, all of our budget comes from donors and volunteers and everything. So 
I accepted the challenge and man, that was about 12 years ago. And now we're coming up on our 20, uh, 20, uh, fifth and the last few years since COVID, we set record after record. And this year we're already on pace to, to shatter last year's record turnout. So being the 25th plus, we just got a star studded, uh, uh, cast with Arn Anderson, Tony Savani, the great Tony Gurria, uh, 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 Dr. Tom Pritchard as trainer, uh, Greg Gagne. We, we got them from all, all, all the, uh, the old territory, the AWA, NWA, and all the other organizations. We, we got, we got award winners from all those guys to kind of honor and, and celebrate the 25th year. Oh, it sounds like it's going to be an awesome celebration for three days out there. I, oh man, I I've got to get out there. I'll, you I'll, got to get out there. I'll cover about it. It. I, I come out to Vegas all the time for that for that cauliflower alley thing that uh, they put on out there, and Brian Blair does a great job. Him and his staff does a great job out there. So, if I can get out to Vegas, I know Waterloo ain't no Las Vegas, but it it it's right there by the Field of Dreams. If you're a baseball fan. If you're a rock and roll fan, it's not too far from where the great Buddy Holly and the Big Bopper and, and all those guys, the airplane went down. They got a, a site and, and a monument there at the last, uh, the last uh, concert that they played there. There's a lot to do in Waterloo. Plus, the museum will occupy your day for at least two days of, of three days you're out there. Yeah, plus you know, hopefully we're getting some more Penn State guys in there, by the way. Well, I, you know, I'm over Penn State guy. I just come out and try to learn something from my Cowboys out there. They're trying to show that, share that knowledge. Everybody's on me. Well, you got Penn State. The Oklahoma State going to be Penn State. Let's get something real straight here. <laughs> uh, uh, David Taylor, a great young man, was coached by Kel Sanderson, right? The great right. one of the greatest all time around. You know who Kel Sanderson was coached by? Yeah, I'm good. I'm waiting. Go ahead, hit us okay. with it. Okay, coach, coach Bobby Douglas, who was a teammate of Jack and my freshman coach at Oklahoma State University. So that makes <laughs> Dave Taylor uh, uh, Oklahoma State Cowboy second generation, or whatever the hell you want to say. All right, all right, Gerald. <laughs> Man, I'm from, I'm from PA, so yeah, you, okay. I, I, well, I know. Well, well, what a job Kale has done out there. But it's at that, that that Oklahoma State coaching that Kale had his background. So. Huh? All right, we'll we'll I'll, I'll give you a few yeah. points for that. I'll give you a few. We'll, we'll give you a near fall. Thank you. <laughs> how many points? How many points near fall? Now you know there's two, three, and four near fall. Uh, I can only give you. I, I can, can only four. You gotta give me a four kind. Of I'm only giving you a three. I can, three, I can only I give you three. three. <laughs> I'll take three. <laughs> That along with three point take down, my head six to nothing already. Oh man, <laughs> that means I'm done. There's no, there's no way I'm coming back from that. that. Nope. But yeah, but it's, it is going to be a great time. So, uh, Jerry, where can everybody get tickets and information about uh, coming out? Uh, on Twitter, Facebook, uh, uh, TNT, HOF, TNT Hall of Fame. Uh, you go on there. Uh, our, our good man, Troy Peterson and Chad Olson and Rebecca, uh, Becca Roper out at the museum along with Coach Miller. Coach Miller, he's, he's a lot like he's, he's the head of the, the amateur uh, side of the museum. And the, and the museum in general, but he's like, he's like a dig able in division two. He won like 11 straight NCAA championships with his team there, man. Hey, what a great coach. What a motivator. And it had come out on that first night, that Thursday night, you get, you get to hear coach Gable. Yeah. People pay thousands and thousands of dollars to hear coach Gable speak and to hear his passion and his speech that he gives every every year towards professional wrestling, and everybody, well, Gable, you know, he's one of the amateur wrestlers, he's a, he's a great coach, all that, he, you know, pro wrestling. What's it mean? You find out real quick where the pro wrestling stands with Coach Gable right away. He's involved the entire weekend. He's there. He's accessible. Fans love him. He loves our fans. He loves. He's made great dear friend uh, friends with a lot of our attendees out there. And he's just like me and, and anybody else that's out there. He's accessible, and he loves to talk pro wrestling and amateur wrestling and, and the talk between the two of them. i tell you where Coach Gable has really, really now become bigger and bigger fans of pro wrestling and because of the women's wrestling. Women's wrestling in college is now starting to balloon kind of like it did, you know, in the, when they had the, the change of guard with, with the WWE uh, divas into, into the ladies' wrestling. It's ballooning, and Coach Gable has taken notice of that, and he's preaching to these uh, amateur coaches to watch WWE, how they're handling their women, 
how the women now are getting equal building, how their main event in WrestleMania and all this stuff. And Gable's using that same uh, same floor plan, same model, when he's out preaching to these coaches to start women's program in the universities in there, that there's opportunities for these young ladies, not only in professional, but in, in college. Of, if I had daughters right now, I'd have them on the map because of scholarship opportunities in the next few years with more and more Division One programs starting lady dressing and women dressing is going to be insane for these uh, young girls at, at, at that early age that are starting now. So, folks, get get your get your young ladies into amateur wrestling if, if you want them to get a scholarship. There you go. And uh, and if I get a chance to get out there, I'll uh, have to say hi to Backlund, too, because he and Brad Ryan's I went to North Dakota State, and uh, Bucky Mon, the coach, and learned under wow. him a little bit. Wow. And, uh, yeah, so I'll have to give, t- do a little bison talk with those guys. So There you go. <laughs> well, yeah. Gerald, I, I know you got to get rolling, but I want to thank you so much. It, it, honored to talk to you, and uh, you know, been a fan of uh, was a fan of both you and your brother for a long time. And uh, this was certainly a thrill for me to have you come on the Mark Oak Show, uh, Jason. I appreciate it, and uh, hopefully, we'll get to see you out in Waterloo. It's going to be a great time, and everybody's got to go get their tickets and come out. It's going to be a blast. Well, I appreciate being on here. You know, it's a thrill for me to come on and talk about the, the thing I'm uh, most passionate about, and uh, and that's that's the Hall of Fame out there. Go on Twitter and Facebook, uh, George Tragus and Says, Tragus and Says TNT Hall of Fame. And there's, there's, there's links to tie you in. And it's really uni- uh, uh, fantastic right now. If you join our lifetime membership, which is a, it's a cheap 285 75 whatever it is, you get a T-shirt with the George Tragus uh, Luthez Hall of Fame uh, logo on it and on the back of it it has all of our all of our lifetime members names on the t-shirt there there's sergeant slaughter on there jbl's on there and if we can't get out of here without talking about my podcast oh yeah I'm trying to that. slip out of here without yeah. talking about my podcast but get that t-shirt go ahead and make your donation that that uh 401c which means it's tax uh, tax deductible everything all the donations are tax deductible so get on there and get that and uh and most of all Tune into YouTube and wherever you get your podcast for stories with Briscoe and Bradshaw. I've learned a bit, a little bit about the history of our business. We've had some of the greatest historians in the in the world recently. On we had Greg Oliver on talking about Toronto wrestling. We had Mike uh, Mooneyham talking about uh, Mid Atlantic wrestling. We had Doctor Mike Lano talking about the West Coast wrestling not long ago. We had Al Gantz talking about uh, Oklahoma wrestling. We've had some Texas boys talking about old Texas wrestling. So we we, we cover it all. So, you know, Brist stories with Briscoe and Bradshaw on YouTube and then where you get your podcast. There you go. Well, Gerald, thank you so much for the time. We do appreciate it. And uh, good luck with everything. And we will hopefully, I'd love to do this again soon. And, uh, we'll talk some more, okay? I'd love to be able to talk some more. Talk, I, I like to talk football. I like talking sports, but I love talking wrestling. So uh, I appreciate you guys' time. And, and if I don't see you now, we're going to be tapping like you need, mean it when I do see you. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you, sir. We do appreciate it. There you go, everybody. Gerald Briscoe joining us on the Mark Hoke Show. What a thrill and an honor to have uh, Gerald Briscoe on the show. That was awesome. Yes, that was absolutely oh, awesome. Oh, man. And by the way, we are way behind, so we got to get to a commercial break. <laughs> I kind of knew that was coming, so stick around, everybody. We got a whole lot more on the Mark Hoke show coming up. Uh, we got to talk a little WCW. The last episode of Who yeah. Killed WCW aired, so we got to discuss that. And uh, what else did I have planned? I I forgot what else we were, heck we were going to talk about. I don't know. It was because uh, I got lost in the shuffle on on uh, on Gerald's interview there. Yeah. I could just talk to Gerald all day. I wish he could have stayed for the whole show. Exactly. But what a thrill. Next time. Oh, man. We'll be right back. 1015 FM K Don. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. And we return to the Mark Hoke Show here on K Don. 1015 FM it is the talk of Las Vegas and. Wow. Jason Alpern sitting in with me today. What a, you know, I got to tell you, I never thought when I started doing this show that I would be getting to talk to some of these guys and ladies, of course, too. But what a thrill. 
that that was just amazing. Yeah, that was absolutely amazing. Um, you know, and, and it's really great because, uh, you know, as I was saying during the break is, you know, most people don't really remember, remember Gerald Briscoe for anything, uh, anything other than being, being one of the, you know, the Stooges. Yeah. And there was so much more to him. There is so much more to him uh, in, in the wrestling industry. And it, it's great to have a, have a, a gentleman on like that. Yeah, I mean, he was such a massive influence. I mean, if you start working backwards, he was such a massive influence backstage, you know, with yeah. him and Pat Patterson. I mean, they weren't just two guys that were hanging around. I mean, they were putting together some of the greatest matches of all time. They were you know, mentors to so many of the wrestlers that you saw in the Attitude Era. Yeah. I mean, you know, Gerald Gerald and Jack did so many incredible things in their career. You know, it. it it is it is kind of crazy that Gerald was at you know when you think about the like the Briscoe and Funk rivalries, you know Gerald was the only one that didn't win the world championship. He was the yeah. world junior heavyweight champion, and they you know of course he and he and Jack won the world tag team titles a bunch of times. Since in one of one of the great rivalries, by the way, I mean they stepped in after if you remember if you remember back when uh, you know Sergeant Slaughter and. Uh, uh, and now I'm gonna now I'm gonna blow that, but uh, they they were let me let me let me just pull it real fast before I screw it up because I don't want to say the wrong thing. But uh, but back in that was Starcade, uh, Steamboat and Youngblood. If you remember when yeah. they were the World Tag Team Champions, you know they had that feud with with Sarge, and uh, you know the, the headline Starcade uh, when they had that big saw in Greensboro, and then the Briscoes were the next ones in line. They turned heel. Mm-hmm. So they duked it out with Steamboat and Youngblood, and that was a huge, huge feud that, that was selling buildings out. You know, as a, as the tag team champions, and you know they, you know they were repeatedly tag team champs all over the world. And you know, Gerald had a a lot of interesting teammates too. I was kind of looking this up real quick that uh, he had teamed. Let's see, where was it? I, and he had an interesting list. Like in Georgia, the, they won the Georgia Tag Team Championship. He did five times, twice with Jack, but he also teamed with Backlund, Ole Anderson, and Rocky Johnson. I didn't realize. <laughs> I remember the Rocky Johnson team, but I didn't remember the other ones. That was interesting. It's but, a list. But, I mean, it, he was everywhere. And, uh, you know, just uh, an, an unbelievable career, of course, was in the middle of the Montreal screw job. Yeah. You know, just a, an amazing career for that guy. And, you know, we, uh, you know, very honored to have him on. So, so thank you to Gerald Briscoe. Wow, just uh, so cool. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying not to mark out, but it's hard. <laughs> it is so hard. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, I guess uh, we'll switch gears a little bit here. I guess I, I do want to talk about that WCW episode, episode four of Who Killed WCW aired. So all the evidence is in according to that episode. Jason Halperin, dun, 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 who killed WCW? Who did it? Oh, man. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's so tough to, to pin down one specific thing that killed it. I mean, there's so many things that did it. Um, look, at the end of the day, I, I really don't think that I think it was the corporation. I, I think it was everything behind the scenes. It wasn't the. It wasn't WCW itself. It, it was the parent company. It was. They don't, I don't think they really wanted them. I, you know, I, I think they they really didn't. You know, you had you had the Time Warner buyout of it. It was of the company of of Turner at that point, and it it just wasn't a direction they wanted to go. I think uh, that was a fair amount of it too. And I'm trying not to be too influenced by just the TV show because there there's a lot. And you know, Eric Eric Bischoff came off looking pretty good in this series. Yeah. And uh, you know, we were talking to Coach Rosie about it earlier in the show. You know that uh, Eric, I think, in a lot of ways, doesn't get his due. But you know, they he, he did make some mistakes. I don't think you can sit there and say that Eric Bischoff's hands are clean on the whole thing. But. They're not there without him. Oh, absolutely. They're, not. they're no I mean, no way they're there without him. I and and I agree with you in that um that Turner's that the guys at Turner that he had to work with, man, if they could have turned the lights out, they would have done it in a heartbeat. 
And they would have done it a lot sooner. Absolutely. You know, it, it just it, it just wasn't what they wanted. No, they were they were snotty. Yeah. Quite frankly, they were snotty. But the problem was you, know, you first you had a guy who believed in it and the guy was the boss. But the other problem that that they couldn't control was they were drawing huge numbers. Yeah. What are you gonna do when this is this is your top show? You know, yeah. it's like it's, it's like you're sitting there and you know you're it, it's like if your if your kid is doing a math problem the wrong quote unquote wrong way, right? Or they're doing something a way that you don't think they should do it. But they get to that get to the point where the problem solved the way they did it. But it wasn't the way you wanted it done. It's like ugh. Well, you, Dad, but you got there, but uh, it wasn't the way I wanted to do it. Or you should do it, oh, but you, know, you got there. Okay, yeah. oh. <laughs> and you just cringe. You know these. It it's it's fascinating when you and I tell you some of those executives like Brad Siegel just came off looking so swarmy yeah. on that show. They really did, and they kind of deserved it. They did oh, absolutely. You know, but I mean. There were some egos back there, and there were some, you know, and and I think Eric made some contract mistakes, and they made some booking mistakes. I don't think there was any question about that. And, you know, and Vince Russo, I get what Vince Russo was trying to do. I understand it. But the execution, I, I couldn't watch. I'll be honest with you. I just, it was... There were there were a lot of times on there where I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna go watch Raw for a while. We got another crazy <laughs> weird skit going on, and I just can't take it. Yeah, you yeah. know, I guess because as a wrestling purist, yeah, you know, I was like, this is this is not for me. So, yeah, it was it was weird, but but they had their moments too. You know, the the match where uh, you know Bret Hart had the the fast count that never happened. You know the David Arquette, the the Bash at the Beach. I mean, there were there were mistakes that got made, and in booking wise, that that hurt them a lot. You know, the overbooking of the NWO. Yeah, yeah. You know, just they just they. You can't say that it totally wasn't the wrestling pro, but everybody makes booking mistakes. Exactly, right? this happened in every in every uh, every single company. Those are going to happen. Yeah. No, the David Arquette one was horrendous. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. We, as we discussed on that one already, that was that was the Shark Tank right there. That was, jump, that was jumping the Shark Tank on that one. Just, just so bad. And you know, it's funny. And I think one person that I, if I wish I would have heard more from DDP, I got to yeah. reach out to him. I would love to talk to Diamond Dallas Page about this more individually, because you know, <laughs> at the end of that show on when he, and he he dropped the fu bomb on one of the execs and. Uh, you know, just some of the things that he said. He was very direct about what he thought, and you always, yeah. you always felt like Page had his ego under control. You know, so I, I mean, if if there was, if I had to pick one performer to really get an opinion about all of it, he's probably the guy I'd really want to talk to. You know, you know, he's he was one of those guys. He he'd been there for you know forever. And uh, he probably has a lot of insight on this. Yeah, I mean, he was very thankful for yeah. getting in the position he was. It wasn't expected to happen, and you know, I was, and I, and you know, we had Booker T on the show a few times, and I've interviewed him on SportsX Radio too. And I was, I was a little surprised about a couple of the comments Book made in there. Um, you know, just he flat out threw it at the feet of Eric Bischoff on the last show, I, and I'm, I'm, I would love to talk to some of the some of the black wrestlers that were in WCW and because, you know, he thought that he would never win the world title because he was black. And mm-hmm. I'm curious about that. If that, if why he felt that way, if it was just a general, you know, this is the sign of the times or whatever. But I mean, this was the late nineties. Yeah. You know, I mean, was it because of a certain person or people or, you know, just, the way he grew up or what, you know, what, why would he, why would he feel that way? Because he had an ally in Vince Russo there. Absolutely. You know, Vince good. Russo was like, I want to put the belt on this guy. You know, so what, what was, and there was, there was a lot of interesting little tidbits in that whole show that you could 
make a whole little show out of if you mm-hmm. you tore the thing apart. So yeah, it was it was um, it opened some eyes. I think it did. Yeah, it definitely did. Uh, it, it it was not a. Some of the stuff was shocking. Some of it was not. Yeah, that that kind of I mean, comes out in it. Yeah, some of it we knew. Yeah, some of but, it was already known, and it was uh, okay. But, uh, you know, I, I think the series in itself was better than I was expecting. Um, more interesting than I expected, to be honest with you. You know, you've seen so much stuff written and so much done on on the demise of WCW. But this one, you know, something coming from The Rock on this one, didn't think it was going to be as as good as it was. Yeah. It, I mean, there were some, some factual things. If you listen to Meltzer and, uh, and Alvarez, that there were some stuff that was just off yeah you know but yeah that we'll write the memorial on this thing as it goes along but it was it was um you know i i will lay it at the feet of the execs over overall so absolutely that's like i said that's where i put it i put that one on corporate i put the gun in their hands and with that i'm also going to pull the trigger and get us into our next commercial break before we run (laughs) out of time jason halper and mark hoke here on the mark hoke show the best in pro wrestling news and entertainment What a great show today, and we're going to wrap it up when we come back. So stick around. A little news and notes around the pro wrestling world as we get ready for Forbidden Door tonight. Should be an awesome card, so pick that up on pay-per-view. Help out AEW. We'll be right back. One oh one five FM K Don. You're listening to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Vegas, The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Now, here again is Mark Hoke. And we return for the final segment of The Mark Hoke Show this week here on KDAW 1015 FM. And just to remind everybody, this will be up on YouTube and you can subscribe. And of course, we're putting all the clips from the show up there as well. So you can check that out and uh you know if you just want to catch little pieces and so on you know relive the show feel free of course podcasts available on markhokeshow.podbean.com and all your favorite podcast outlets as well and there's a million ways to watch the show so do it you doofuses yeah pencil neck geeks there we go we'll throw it back there you go get an old one in there yeah but uh, jason halpern I'm Mark Hope. Thanks for being with us. Hey, by the way, I don't know. Can I talk about a TNA spoiler real quick just to prove a point? Sure, Jason? why not? Why not? So they had their set of TV tapings in Philadelphia, and they're doing a six-way match for the world title coming up at Slammiversary. And guess what happened at the contract signing? What's that? Joe Hendry put Moose through a table. <laughs> just saying. Just a little bit. Just saying. Could be a, uh, a yeah, preview. Well, it's Moose, Josh Alexander, Steve Macklin, Nick Nemeth, Frankie Kazarian, and Joe Henry for the TNA title. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> and I don't know if you also saw that he at a NASCAR race that one of the commentators did a uh, Joe Hendry spoof like say his name and he appears and use the uh, the racer's name in it. There was also a reference on a sign at the Stanley Cup too. <sighs> He's big right now. He's huge. You got to cash in on him while you can. He's huge. Uh, also, some news this week. I don't know if you saw what happened, but WWE is not re-signed Dijak. They're nuts. Yeah, it's he's a, going straight to AEW. Do not pass go. Do not collect the. Uh, that's an absolute crazy thing right there. Uh, I'm. I'm surprised by that one that they that they didn't uh, that they did not bring him back. Oh, they they claimed he was on a main he was on a main roster contract, and I'm like, oh man, the dude is. I've been watching that guy since Ring of Honor. That guy is a beast. You know, oh, get, they never really used him right in WWE. They just didn't. Well, Retribution was a joke. Yeah, and then when they finally had a good match, really good match with him again on NXT, of course. The, the feud with Keith Lee, that was awesome. That was awesome. That was the the best thing they did with him was that feud with Keith Lee. Well, you know, Keith Lee's kind of hanging out, not doing a whole lot in AEW right now. Yeah. Just saying. 
could be a good chance to uh, revive it. Yeah, give me give me some die jack back. Yes. So. And uh, let's see what else we got going on here. Uh, pulling my news and notes while somebody is trying to call the station. <laughs> <laughs> not taking phone calls, kids. Sorry. Are we in trouble? No, we, we're, we not, do no we're not doing anything wrong. <laughs> Give me a second here. There we go. That was helpful. There you go. No, not, not as helpful as it needed to be. Jason, talk for five seconds for me. Real quick, Jason, talk. I am talking. I am talking. Well, you know what? Hey, the one thing we didn't do is we didn't go over and look at any of the comments there today. I do see Bionic oh, Scoop, Scoop is in there. Scoop. Yeah, Scoop. We didn't want to leave you hanging there. I'm sorry, buddy. Yeah, it's saying Hangman returns to cost Osprey and Screw Swerve. Protects them both and gives Hangman a, get, get a Hangman Osprey program. All right. I'm down with that. That's possible. I'm down with that. That sounds like a plan. Uh, Kale Braxton is also leaving uh, WWE, so we say goodbye to her. And uh, Money in the Bank. We're down to one more spot in the men's match. And uh, yeah. right now, that uh, hey. field is for the guys. Uh, it's Us, J. Uso, Carmelo Hayes, Andrade, Chad Gables in L.A. Knight, and the winner of the Drew McIntyre, Sheamus, and Ilya Dragunov match. Gee, it looks like your guy has a chance. He has a chance. To possibly get in. He has a chance. <laughs> Look out. He has a chance. Oh, my God. Put your McIntyre. Give him the case. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Come on, it's WWE. It's a great spin. It's a great spin. Oh, we'll see what happens in this qualifier match on Monday. I can't yep. wait. Well, hey, we had an awesome show today. Jason, thank you for sitting in. I do appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me again. want to thank uh, Coach Rosie, Josh Rosenbaum, for joining us from ad-free shows. Make sure you check them out. And, of course, Gerald Briscoe joining us here as well what an honor to have him on the show and of course subscribe to us on youtube at the mark hoke show and of course facebook the mark hoke show mark hoke show.com twitter at mark hoke show or x we're everywhere guys and we want to thank you for making us the number one live show on the station and the you know the best in las vegas we'll see you next week have a great time enjoy forbidden door we'll see you next show enjoy your afternoon las vegas Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show. Like us on Facebook at The Mark Hoke Show. And visit MarkHokeShow.com to keep up with everything happening with the show. And remember to check out all of our archive shows on YouTube at The Mark Hoke Show and download our podcasts at MarkHokeShow.Podbean.com and all your favorite podcast outlets. So join The Mark Hoke Show family today, and thanks for listening.